Hello, welcome back. This is Kenshin1913, and we're Let's Playing Dragon Quest VIII. In the last episode, we did some treasure hunting and got our final monster. Infamous monster, that is. And now we're gonna do some more treasure hunting, this time on a place a lot of people have been talking about in the comments section. But, um, yeah. A cool area where we can find some of the... where, where is one of the best places to level up. So let's head there. And it's north, northeast of Arcadia, just a bit north of Rydom's Tower, as you can see. Wouldn't that be cool if we could just land on the top of the tower? Be like, oh, hey Rydom, what's up? And here we are. This is where we're going. Hawwind Hill, I think it's called. Now this place is pretty neat because of the, the way it's set up, and uh, I think it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I can't navigate my way out of a wet paper bag, so we're going to, we're gonna go, yeah, see, it has um, some different things, as you can see. There's one treasure here, which is a really good treasure, and we're gonna try to get it. But yeah, the reason why this place is the best, one of the best places to level up is because we can fight. Metal Slimes. Metal Babbles and Metal King Slimes. That's right. And you'll probably see somewhere along the line I will be switching from sword to spear. There we go. Look at that. Oh, uh, oh, it's magic. No, it's just the power of editing. Anyways, yes, yeah, so on this hill we can run into a lot of metal creatures in which uh, you can use your abilities. I think I've explained on how to kill them. Use the, the, the critical hit or miss abilities. I, I like using those better than using metal slime abilities. Or the metal cut ability. And whips also work too if you use the uh, twin dragon lash. That's a pretty good ability to use on the, the metal monsters as well. But yeah, as you can see, I can't navigate my way through this place because I can't get myself I can't navigate myself out of a wet paper bag. So yeah, this whole area you'll be fighting slime-like enemies, basically, um, you know, regular blue slimes, red slimes, heal slimes, uh, slime kings, king cure slimes, there's just a, a lot of slime guys. Again, metal slimes, metal babbles, metal king slimes, you know, the whole deal. So this is, uh... This is basically like Slime Island in Dragon Quest uh, six, uh, 5, near the Metal King, where you just fight a bunch of slimes. It's one of the better places to level up as well. Either here or Dragon Graveyard, that's usually where I level up. Because the Dragon Graveyard, you usually run, I well, to me, you usually run into more, oh god, you gotta go the other way, you gotta go around here. But yeah, it's got like these little holes in the hill, and it's pretty cool, I like it. But, um, what else? Yeah, um... I can't remember. I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, the, uh, slimes. Yeah, it, this or, or Dragon Graveyard. Because that's where you find the Metal Kings uh, things. And now we get the best axe in the game. And it is the Conqueror's Axe. The world's strongest axe for Yangus. It brings up his attack, plus 23. Now, sadly, it is not the strongest weapon in the game for Yangus, but it is the strongest axe. So, we will be using that for quite a while, because I do like... Uh, I think the best weapon in the game for him is either a hammer or a flail, which we'll get way later. Um, but... Yeah, uh... Now he's got this cool axe... That originally I thought was cursed, but actually it is not. It's just cool looking. Yeah, look at all the treasure that's been buried all around this place. But, um, what else? Uh, yeah, so we got, um, the axe. And it, uh, it's not the best weapon in the game for Yangus, but... And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice axe. Like, there'll be... There'll be sides that are better. There's a, actually the axe is probably the best axe is probably the weakest of his like best uh, you know hammer, best scythe, and best uh, 
well, that's it, really. I mean, he can use a flail later, you know, the item we get from the mini metal place, but, um, yeah, I don't, I, I haven't gotten it, uh, in a while, so I can't remember if it hits all enemies or whatever. Alright, so let's land here on the, uh, Godbird's Eyrie, or Eyrie, or whatever it is, because, yes, we can explore this place as well. Now, this is optional as well. Like, I, I would definitely explore all those little places on top of the world, but this is optional. You don't really have to come here, but I'm coming here because there's a very... Yeah, let's equip my sword back. Because there is a very, very, very good item on the tippity top that we want to get. It's for alchemy. It's not like storyline purposes. It's very nice. And so, yeah, we can come here. Yes, it is, Angelo. I love uh, detours. It is some of the best stuff to do. And actually, this finally is the last dungeon, new area kind of thing that we can go to. Besides one other place. But I don't call it a dungeon because it's a new town. But yeah, let's, let's head off into the Light World's Godbird Eyrie. Or, I, I, whatever the hell it's called. Anyways, yeah, so, just like before, there's five treasures all in the same location. So, uh, since we've already navigated through this whole area, I'm just gonna run towards the treasures. And then we'll get to the tip top, see if there's anything there. And then we'll keep going. Yay, for mini metal. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should just c cut to the, uh, cut to the treasure chest but that's all right we'll just walk through here one more time in case people forgot and this time we'll go in without having a detour but yeah there's a lot of battles you can fight in here obviously um basically uh same enemies that you would fight on godbird uh on the isolated island basically is where we'd be fighting here you know mucho machos uh, what else? Those alligator thingies. Ironically, you fight some drakies outside. What else do we fight? Baron Riders and those demon thunderers. Yeah, you got a lot of, a lot of, uh, monsters to fight here. And as you're noticing, I have been ending out quite a many battles. Actually, the encounter rate on, on, uh, Howlwind Hill is pretty high, too. Especially since they were insignificant, but most of them were insignificant battles. It was like, it was like, damn it. All you insignificant battles. But anyways, um, I think between here and the, uh, I think between here, I think I learned Jessica. I, she went up a level, and sometimes when you go up a level, and like, you pour skill points into one thing, It'll only let you go to a certain point for each level, and then, like, next level you can raise it a little more. So basically, I think during this whole thing when I was going, um, I had her get 99 um, skill points in the wand, or in the staff area. And uh, I think by the time we get out of here, she will have learned Kazing, which is the same spell Angelo uses, which is 100% revival success rate. So yeah, she learns Kazing, which is awesome. Because now it's another person who can revive people. And I'm thinking about giving An um, Yangus the Staff of Rex Resurrection so that he has some sort of uh, ability to revive people too. And then everyone in the group will have a, uh, some way of reviving people. So yeah, let's just keep going this way. I'll probably, I'll probably do that. That sounds like a good idea. Damn. But yeah, let's keep going. Uh-oh. We've got new enemies. Killer Croakers. Now, I think these are some of the hardest... Yeah, and lately I've been... The strategies I've been using for getting through this whole thing is using Crackle or Kaboom, and then every once in a while, Kashwoosh. Just to get rid of everyone, and using Zap. Because I'm running into a lot of monsters. So I'm using them in order to kill... A giant groups because it's really just getting in the way. And yes, as you can see, when these guys turn around, 
just like their weaker cousins, they do uh, nastier things. Jeez. They hit harder, they use that breath, which can actually, I think it numbs you. Or, some, or makes you lose a turn or something. That burning breath. And so, yeah, you, you kind of want to try to do a one-two punch, make sure they don't turn around. But yeah, I've been using a lot of Zap and Kakrackle, because a lot of the monsters here are not susceptible to Kaba. Ooh! So let's get this treasure. And look at that. Gold nugget. Another alchemy item. And let's keep going. Yes, um, sorry about the, well, the episode's a little shorter than it usually is, but I think that's because I cut out a bunch of battles, and then maybe I cut out one that I forgot to keep in. But yeah, there's these enemies, Mucho Machos, which are basically like the big Dumdara guys, and uh, the, the big blue yellow guy. Ooh, new enemies, uh, Smackers. Now these guys can cast... Or maybe they're not new, maybe they were... Oh, whatever, these guys can cast a magic barrier, so let's use Kevaboom. Let's have them take on the stone golems. But, um... What are they gonna say? Oh yeah, these Mucho Macho guys, yeah, they can do that. Which is a pain. Which makes them less susceptible to magic. But yeah, the Mucho Macho guys are just like, uh, the Dumdara guys, they can cast, uh, move on themselves or others. There we go, look at that. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I kind of miss Jessica not getting that MP restoration a little bit, but what are you going to do? Her attack is much better. Anyways, we will have to continue exploring this area in the next episode. See ya!